Oh yeah. Yeah. Or maybe I should do a rap. <laughs> So remember how you felt when I said I would do it the first time? That's how I feel now. <laughs> and, well, and it's a, that's a legitimate feeling. It would be terrible. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, on this is not controversial, but like I'm coming off of the high of that conference. Mm. Um, Florin, have you heard of? Have you seen people post about that conference? That was it was in the U.S. It's called last that week? conference. Yeah, it's, it's called. Confusing. That's the name of I, it. I know. Yeah, I think I saw a few people. Yeah. But... I don't know much. It's a it's a really good one. Um, Clark, the founder, like have become pretty good friends with him and his wife. Who um, I haven't met her. In person. It, yeah, she wasn't in Austin. So there's two of these a year. Brad, Amy, and I, and like a bunch of other people that have been on the podcast uh, were there in person in Austin last year. Mm-hmm. By the way, I am planning on being there this coming year in January. So it's end of January, first couple of days of February. So Brad is in town. So I imagine Brad will make it. Um, Amy, you should come and we should do another I need to do a CFP or if you can get him to do a podcast a podcast. Um, yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, so one of the cool things, and I want to talk to him more about this, like they have this ridiculous setup on the main stage with cameras and lights and audio and the, the equipment's just sitting there. So we have like intro and keynote stuff to kick off the day. And then it kind of just sits there the rest of the day, unless people are doing activities on the main stage. So, um, the way I did last time in Austin where I did interviews with developers. I did that on the main stage this time to take advantage of the equipment. And then also Clark has talked about like trying to keep the main stage like booked. So I was thinking there's a million different types of activities that we could all do together to just Mm -hmm. do them throughout the day and have other people involved as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. I also want to talk to him about doing like a um, Redwood track. Like that would would be cool just to do like a workshop. Yeah, like a huge workshop. Oh, that would be cool. Oh, mm-hmm. And they have um, they have workshop day, right? Like the day before the talk yeah. start. So that yeah, would be a but good... like a just all or like if I just p- was able to pull people related to Redwood to have yeah. like a, a track. So I like I've got to I've got to talk to him. But he had is he doing okay? I he... heard you were emceeing for part of the conference. Yeah. So uh, real quick, uh, Catalan Bourbon on YouTube. What's up, everyone? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, um, like I said, I've gotten, Jess and I have gotten relatively close with Clark and, and then his wife, um, Carrie. And so the morning of the last day, Clark usually kicks everything off. He, he basically gives a talk, like he kind of makes mm-hmm. it up. He talks about impactful things from the day before. Then he introduces the keynote speaker for that day. And he texted uh, me and Taylor actually at like seven in the morning before it's supposed to start at eight 30. And was like, I'm having heart issues and I'm going to the ER, which was like, Mm-mm like a really weirdly emotional morning for me. Like that's mm-hmm. a, a, not a fun text to basically wake up to. Cause I, I was like laying in bed and saw that and I was like, I got it, I got to go. So anyway, um, he asked me to fill in and introduce Lucia. And so I ran down and like got to talk to her to get to know her more. Cause she had just gotten in, in town the night before and uh, did like the opening thing MC and then uh, introduce Lucia. Um, so he was, back at the conference by lunchtime which was good but also it's like clark just take a break and like relax mm-hmm. but it's so hard like i mean he invests so much energy and mm-hmm. and and stuff into the community that it's hard to not be there for that um so anyway like he's he's at home doing fine he's like spending time if you watch follow him on twitter like posting his workouts now and like trying to just um prioritize health mental and physical i think a little bit more yeah. just because he's one of those people that like invest everything that he has into the community in such a good way but also it it takes its toll i feel like he's one of those people that just goes all in on anything Mm -hmm. yeah um so satisfy my eye cool name by the way Um, i'm putting a link um they asked i'm new here how can i connect with your community um so a few different links that i'll put in here as well um one is learn build teach is uh discord community that I run, um, Amy is in there, Brad is in there. I don't think Florin is in there, or maybe had at some point. Um, also, the link to, do I have this on my clipboard? There it is, to I Code This, which is Florin's basically learning platform for people to take daily challenges to build their developer skills. Um, so that one is in the chat as well. And that's what we're gonna be talking about um, with Florin today, to learn more about why he built it, how he built it, um, success stories. Because I've seen Florin, you've posted, we'll, we'll like save this, but you posted some success stories and updates on Twitter and stuff, which is super, super cool to see. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things 
I take inspiration from you and also Danny Thompson of, of just celebrating people in your community mm-hmm. when they have big wins yeah. and want to do a better job of, of doing that. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll dive all into that, but there's a couple links to, to check out. I will also throw in a link to, it didn't show up as a link, I guess. Uh, that dot us, that dot us is uh, where you can find the, that conference details. And I will also do one last thing and then I'll stop talking as much, or at least I'll pretend to. Um, that conference is also my coffee sponsor, which is part of the reason I asked about it. This is not a that conference logo, but there's coffee that's from Clark and the conference in there, which is really delicious. And um, this is not an affiliate link at all. This is just a link if you're interested. It gives you like a dollar off of coffee if you order it. So you can order it and have it shipped to you. I think that probably makes the most sense if you're in the U.S. Um, but I guess it would do um, international as well. I guess I haven't tried that. Also, Brad, I saw I just looked at the private chat. Yeah. Do you have a link? Bradgarapy.com slash store. Let me throw it up. Yeah, grab it. So this is a shirt. I forget. I, I, I think I always misquote this and say that Jason said it first, but I think that's wrong. Or no, someone a, corrected me. A guest of his said it first on his show. On, okay, that's what it was. Yeah. And then Brad made these super comfortable shirts from it, which are pretty sweet. So go and check those out too. All right, we're ready to do actual podcast stuff. <laughs> cool. The so audio I will... is in the streamer too. Which one? The all your sound effects. Mm-hmm. Well, and the intro. Where yes. do you see this? <laughs> I'm just doing that for fun. You're welcome. Um, do you see? Will Brad have access to the brand? He should because he's like a member. Okay. Under brand, and then scroll down to background music. To the very bottom, there's yeah. like loops down here oh i don't see oh play. brand oh gotcha the, the, i haven't deleted these are things that they've what is feeding the ducks okay we're feeding the ducks right now <laughs> <laughs> um but at the bottom there's sound effects that i've loaded in i need to cool. rename them because i just it has the file name no but um sorry everybody a little bit of housekeeping if you pause the sound effect when you hit play again it will pick up where you paused it won't restart the sound effect mm. Is Which there... can sometimes be awkward if you pause like yeah. mid, <gasps> then it picks up and it's already. Yeah, fair enough. So feedback for so um, let it play out. Yard. Okay, well, and no. let it let it play out when you do the. She just called me out for that because I paused one. It was like a direct call out to James. Don't do what you just did. Is what you just said to me. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you were talking about Jess called you out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's less noteworthy. That happens I, <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> I no, it's fine if you pause it. Just know it's gonna happen. Let's see, yeah. is there a reset? Yeah, there's not a reset. But yeah, that would be good feedback for Streamyard. Mm-hmm. Okay, All right. let's do it. Cool. I'll kick us off. Um, and Florin, it's kind of confusing. So you will introduce yourself specifically when we say like Florin, welcome and introduce yourself, etc. Oh, uh, well, wait. Okay. I was like, we do have that <laughs> contentful, but um, it would be awkward to put that on right now. Okay. Four people. Should we save that for the next episode? Yeah, we'll save it. Yeah, cool. Fine. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Compressed FM, a podcast all about web development and design with a little bit of zest. And w- in this episode, we're going to talk about I Code This with daily challenges to get better at coding. Web development and design, who would have guessed? Well, we can do them both, even add a little zest. So turn up the volume, get ready for the best. Let's get it started in this episode of Compress. What's up, everyone? My name is James Hewick, and I am a professional developer, speaker, and teacher. <laughs> is this new? <laughs> I change this every time because I still don't love, I don't I don't feel like I have a title that I love. So I'm, I'm playing around with things. <laughs> Within the last week, you've become a <laughs> professional. <laughs> and I, I do get paid to do these things. So I guess... Uh... I guess it's true, that right? does make you professional. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my name is Amy Dutton, and I am a member of the Redwood JS core team. Hey, y'all. My name is Brad Garropy. I'm a senior front end developer at Atlassian. And in this episode, we are joined by Florin Pop, one of my favorite content creators going back to like, I don't know, several years getting back into taking YouTube seriously. Like you and, and Jesse Codestacker channel were. Uh, big inspirations like around that time for doing YouTube content. So super excited to have you on. 
uh, to talk about I Code This, which is basically a learning slash practice platform for developers to get better at everything they do as developers. So we'll talk all about that, the why, the how, the success stories, et cetera. But Florin, welcome to the podcast. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Florin. Um, I'm a developer. As uh, James said, a professional developer because it right. sounds better. I've <laughs> uh, been doing it for like 10 years. And since then, I became a content creator. And lately, I've been dabbling with the world of SaaS. Hence why I created I Code This to help uh, my audience. And yeah, thank you, James. It was a really nice introduction. I'm flattered that there was an inspiration for you a couple of years ago. And just, just to be clear, like that doesn't mean you were only an inspiration a couple of years ago and it's done. Like, <laughs> you continue to be an inspiration. It's um, good. It's good. <laughs> You're as well for me. So. Yeah. Do you want to start with just like, I, so before getting into I code this specifically, like mm -hmm. what did you think was missing, I guess, from a learning developer perspective that then we'll talk about getting into like I code this specifically, but what was kind of like, the initial inspiration of what you thought was missing in the industry, I guess. Yeah, sure. So simply put, I think practice is missing. Like, uh, especially being a content creator, creating a bunch of tutorials on, on YouTube. Uh, I think that uh, people, especially as beginners, they watch a lot of uh, videos and buy courses and they feel like they're progressing but then they just like open VS Code or whatever editor they're using. And in the black screen, they're appearing in the face like they just don't know what to do. So um, this is what I think will really help them to get, get better at the, their craft. Yeah. And what's interesting is I feel like you tackled this problem, this challenge differently at first. I saw you have this wildly popular GitHub repo called App mm -hmm. Ideas, where you initially started just storing practice problems, practice applications, and sorting them by difficulty for people mm -hmm. to just pluck and be like, hey, if you need practice, go here. So did exactly. you did you find that iCode this was like a next step to that? Or mm -hmm. do you view them as unrelated? Yeah, so I think App Ideas, the GitHub repository was uh something i started in my first year of content creation and it picked up really well like i had a couple of articles with uh like 50 project ideas or something like that which got hundreds of thousands of views so i figured wow this is interesting and then people started to share the repository on twitter like all the time and as i think it has 60 over 60,000 stars right now. It's one of the top 100 repositories on GitHub, which is crazy because oh. I forgot to update it for so long. I'm ashamed. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I wanted to build a website for App Ideas for a while. I think I started once, but something happened. And you're right, it's kind of on the same path, right? Where we give people. Uh, the repository was more like text-based. You just had to figure out the design on your own, on your own. but like uh, I thought this is more where we give you also the design to kind of have the visual part as well. How do you provide those design files to folks? Uh, do you just find that images are good enough or are you using mm -hmm. a design tool like Figma and linking off to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a friend of mine uh, she's a designer and she has this website daily design UI or something like that. I forgot the name. And she's been doing design challenges. I mean, in order to improve her design skills, she's been doing one design every day for the past four years. Wow. So I just, uh, I just use the resources because they're license free. I think it's UI design daily. Mm. I O or something or not. I grabbed the wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's updating uh, now. Another link. But <laughs> uh, yeah, and I just picked up designs from there, and I also started like for the. We also have pro challenges, which are which are bigger projects. Uh, I started to hire people to do the designs for that because I just I'm not good at designing. 
<laughs> okay, I feel like I feel like the hardest problem in running this type of product is coming up with daily content. And so like mm -hmm. that was a very creative solution to say like I I have it now, you know. And your yeah. your designer friend didn't mind, you know, leveraging the work and mm -hmm. That's yeah, well, great. basically, uh, the license is free. You can do whatever you want with it. You can yeah. modify it. You can even sell it. Uh, she did this as a practice, so she thought, why not put it out there? It, it helped me become a better designer, so there you go. You can take it. And, yeah, that, that helped us also to have content for, I think we are in day 280 or something, and we yeah. still have designs from there, so it's pretty awesome. What's your strategy going to be for if that uh, stream ever runs dry? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I I would like so I have two ideas: either hire a designer to do uh, small designs like this, or another idea would be to involve designers into the platform as well. Yeah, so maybe people who would like to. Uh, have their designs out there to have developers build their designs could submit their designs onto the platform and we can pick them and have them as a daily uh, design you know, for the challenges so it's one of the two probably the first one would be easier uh, for the second one would we would have to like integrate it in the platform and, mm -hmm. yeah i feel like we've already addressed well through florin we've addressed two of the most difficult questions for developers to answer first is what do I build or like, what are ideas of things to build to get better? The second one is the quoting I, I'm bad at design. I don't know how to do this. And then you have like, just imitate like the images that you've pulled, you're pulling from an external resource um, or at least inspiration from an external resource, which is like really, really nice and put together. Um, we kind of talked about, like, I think gotten into some of the specifics of I code this, but you want to take a step back really quickly just to like introduce yes. the, the platform and how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So basically on I code this, you get a new coding challenge every day, which consists of an image of a component. It could be, uh, I don't know, short landing page or a nav bar or a model or whatever pop-up you want to call it or uh it could be anything like a blog post card or a profile card so any kind of component which you could find on a website could be the daily challenge and you have 24 hours to um, complete the challenge basically turn it into html and css and if you want to make it interactive add javascript and in 24 hours, you get another challenge. So yeah, we also have a leaderboard where you can kind of get this competition going on if you're really interested in how many challenges you've completed. Recently, we added streaks where you nice. can uh, like keep up the yeah. the pace. So have but you the, sorry. sorry, have you noticed has that made a difference in engagement? Uh, in engagement, the fact that it's daily or uh, well, just the either that part. and just like the streaks and the mm -hmm. leaderboard, like do yeah. people get into that or because sometimes I just don't know yeah. if that motivates me. Mm -hmm. It depends. So two types of people, some people don't care at all, but some people do. Amy. And, yeah. <laughs> and I do like I am very I'm even working on the website now and I have so many other things to do. I really want to get back on track to pick up the leaderboard <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. But yeah, some people don't mind, and for them it's okay. But some people like they like to keep up their streaks. So I oh. think since we launched, there are like ten people who do it every day. So I love that. Like some some of them fell off the wagon, or some of them started later. But uh, yeah, it's a nice thing. But basically, what we want to kind of uh, do is help people get into a habit of coding daily because we saw that this really helps them get better at the craft uh, for example there is this guy adrian who joined our platform in december and he's been doing the coding challenges i think he has over 100 now and guess what in september i'm going to find to hire him uh, full time so wow yeah it, it oh, becomes oh. so good Hold, please. Hold. Where is it? Something. 
but it, yeah. that's legit i mean that's like so so cool to yeah from your perspective to build something that you can does it repeat all right uh to build something that you have the ability to like pay someone to work on like that's mm -hmm. really cool in and of itself but then also yeah. thinking about from their perspective like go through this journey of just trying to get better and then have an opportunity turns mm -hmm. out to have an opportunity at the end sorry to interrupt you but that's just like a really really cool moment yeah it's so exciting to be honest because we have like several people now who said that they got the job and I thought this was a big part of that. Yeah. So That's awesome. So exciting. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I've been doing content creation for years and uh, I've been doing tutorials and all that, but having like having a direct impact in developers' lives, telling me that mm -hmm. they got a job because of something I built is so motivating. Yeah. That's one of one of the coolest feelings I've ever felt is being at a conference mm -hmm. or something and like not even as direct, I think, an impact as what you're saying, but someone says like, watch your videos and it helped me understand X, Y, Z mm -hmm. concept. And I got to use that in an interview, for example, and in past, like such yeah. a, such a cool uh, moment for why we create content in the first place. Yeah. And I wanted to go back to like the leaderboard and the streaks. So Brad and I have streaks in yeah. common on uh, Duolingo. Brad has been <laughs> probably like 530 days with Spanish in a row. Yeah. About, what? I think I'm in the forties now, 540. Okay. And wow. I'm at like 490 and with French and it, it's such a good like Duolingo is not it's not the thing that's going to make you fluent but it gives you a way to stay consistent and I think like actual fluency comes from like having people to practice with but it gives me a reason to spend 10-15 minutes a day going mm -hmm. through at least one challenge with French so that like is 100% motivating to me because at this point I definitely don't want to lose a streak and then also on the leaderboard piece um, so we have a Peloton in our house and people have asked me like how do you like the Peloton and I never thought I would be into biking like stationary biking like it doesn't sound fun at all but the peloton experience and i'm not a salesperson for peloton but it's like it's a different next level experience and the biggest thing is you can see the leaderboard and you can see like live leaderboard like you can see the scores of people that have finished and also people that are doing the course at the same time so i literally like i'll walk into like strap on my shoes and get on i'm like i'm just gonna like take it easy today then i see the leaderboard and i end up like busting my ass because i'm competitive like that leaderboard yeah. means something to me and, and I, they had the same thing in, in Duolingo as well. So that sort of stuff, like, don't underestimate, I guess, the impact that, like, leaderboard streaks, the gamification of, of learning or building or whatever it is can have on user base. I think it's really pretty incredible that you um, added that and then also have already seen some, some impact of that. Yeah, I mean, as I said, some people don't like it because they feel, like, compelled to have to come back to it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a win in them. Yeah, you know. <laughs> As everything in life but uh for most people they get the benefit from that because they get to code daily we all know that if you put in a daily practice you get especially like the challenges are small enough that with time you can get it to uh, under 30 minutes to solve it in under 30 mm -hmm. minutes you know i have a, a a moderator well he became a moderator now but um this guy richard he started doing all the challenges and he went from needing like 60 minutes to do a challenge to 20 minutes you know because he like was reinforcing the same patterns you know the same layouts and stuff and he got to learn other new tricks along the way so yeah so cool what is this is always one of my favorite questions or actually before i do i'm going to transition a little bit brad do you have another like kind of platform question first uh, i was curious about like what users submit and what kind of technologies you allow them to use to build these uis so i see like on the front page of i code this you have like a in browser ide which is sick mm -hmm. yeah is the aim here vanilla html and css or do you enable things like react tailwind etc for folks to build in mm -hmm. yeah so right now we focus more on vanilla javascript html css and anything that can be added with the cdn so for example tailwind is uh, we have like uh, a demo project which whenever you start a challenge you kind of see you know is some a piece of code that appears there and by default that uses tailwind cdn so yeah right because you can just pull in the entire built yeah. 
CSS file and it's like gigantic, but then you yeah. at least give everybody access to all the classes, exactly. which leads to my controversial point ever. Maybe not. Performance You're going to quote yourself again? Yes, I am. I, this is fun. <laughs> Performance only matters when it matters. Like people would lose their shit if they knew. Some people would lose their shit knowing that like, you're importing all the Tailwind classes. That's so bad. But it's like, it doesn't matter in this case. Like, it, it's just an enabler to get the job done. And it works for yeah. what we're doing. Anyway, continue. Yeah. And, <laughs> and <laughs> that's a good point. And we want to enable stuff uh, in, like, uh, allow people to do to use React and Vue. But right now, so we're using uh, this uh, built-in browser ID. Um, I think it's called Monaco Editor or something like that. Yeah. And it's not working very well with React so far. So we're still working around it to figure out how to enable React because you need a compiler, right? So right now, there's something we're, uh, we're working on to see whether we have to use another tool or... Yeah, whatever we have to do to allow people to also use Vue. I think you still can use Vue, if I'm not mistaken. And even I think, React. I think you'd still use React as well, pull it in from yeah, CDN. But it's, yeah. it's just in the HTML, it looks ugly, you know? Yeah. But yeah, on the you know, term, want that. another interesting take on this could be embed a code sandbox mm -hmm. and let folks pick a starter, and then you have GitHub integration. Hmm. I, I just don't know how you would pull the yeah. code out of it you know i wonder if that embed has any kind of functionality for that yeah we've been looking at what possibilities are out there right now there is one tool called i think code sandbox or yeah. sandpack or something like that yeah that's right it's um that one's built by um i think stack blitz i think they maintain it um because i've that. seen josh komu talk about mm -hmm. it quite a bit um, yeah, he uses it in his courses. Yeah, uh, Stack Blitz is also interesting too because yeah. if you've looked at Total TypeScript, Egghead partner mm -hmm. programs are using that as part of their IDE, kind of what um, mm -hmm. Brad was suggesting. Yeah, so when we tried that, actually in the upcoming courses, we have a section and we're using that editor to mm -hmm. allow people to yeah maybe use React in courses in the future. But what we found with that one is that it has fewer future, uh, features than Monaco on other sites. Like it doesn't have MF support. Oh, interesting. Uh, and yeah, you can't zoom in. Like, so it's a, uh, yeah, you, you kind of got to find like a balance. We also thought about allowing our members to like, submit a GitHub repository with a live preview. But yeah, I kind of like the fact that they stay on our platform <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. as a business uh, business perspective. But uh, yeah, well, we're still trying to find the best solution. And at the same time, uh, we thought that, OK, let's just focus on vanilla right now and make it the best experience to learn those. because. Like, honestly, if you know vanilla well, you can kind of then go and mm -hmm. learn whichever framework you want, right? So, yeah, we. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. Like, there's, there's a ton of options for people who want to teach, um, like, the latest technology. Everybody wants to be first to get the tutorial about the latest React release or the latest database coming out. Or Astro or... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And so, <laughs> so I think like in order to bring people back to fundamentals, we got to make sure we have up-to-date resources because, you know, as we all know right now, CSS is moving along. JavaScript is moving along. HTML, is, there's some stuff coming on the horizon. And like if we can kind of push that educational content, the foundational stuff mm -hmm. and like the web platformy stuff, then I think everybody's going to be better off, you know, yeah. not trying to like rewrite form submissions and things like that. Exactly. That's kind of what we focusing right now. And yeah, for sure. Later down the road, if we find a solution to work nicely with what we have, uh, we really want to go because like, 
our main focus, at least in this first phase of the startup, if you want to call it, is to help developers get a job. And it's like it's way easier to um, for them to get a job if they know React or Vue. You know, it's sure. easier than saying, "Okay, I just know vanilla," because companies are looking for that. So we know that that's something we should have at some point. Mm-hmm right, in our offering. Uh, but at the same time, as I said, having a solid gasp of uh, vanilla is really important as well. So basically. One of, one of my, like, best performing series on YouTube is now, like, four or five years old, and it's build a quiz app with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the beauty of it is, like, yeah, there's new features in JavaScript and CSS, but for the most part, you could take that course right now yeah. And it would be the exact same. Like there's there's almost nothing I would need to change. And I, that's one of like trying to figure out like my strategy going forward is to get back more into that. Like people have responded really well to like just build a thing with um, with vanilla JavaScript. And Florin, I haven't done this. We've talked about this, but I haven't actually executed on it. But it's still on my backlog is to just do more of those videos and then tap into I code this for mm-hmm. like the challenges and kind of lead people that way. Because it is it answers those like really tough questions of what do I build? How do I practice? What does it look like? And when you give them an image, then it's figured out because uh, from a, from a teaching perspective, following a homework assignment where they give you instructions is relatively easy in comparison to like, all right, here's the thing, figure out how to do it yourself. Like that's a completely different um, skill to have. And I think a completely different level of learning. So I love being able to combine that in one platform. Yeah. Can we rabbit hole just a little bit though? (laughs) Uh, because, because as much as I love having a document to work off of as a front end developer, do we find that that's the norm or do you find that half the time your product manager or just your regular managers, like, I don't know, we need a UI that does this yeah. kind of waves his hands around a little bit. And he's like, Figure you can it design it. Right. <laughs> do we feel like that's the norm? Amy, I know. I feel like well, in your case, the answer is no. <laughs> well, the Amy thing just is, does it all herself. So it's yeah. like, that's no big deal. <laughs> that's part of it. I was going to say, when I am pulled into, like when I was working at Zeal, and I get pulled into the project, my role on the project is design. So I'm not going to have a project manager. Well, I will have a project manager in every yeah. case. They wave their hands and say, you design it. But that's I up to you. Designer. Yeah. I am the designer. But we, I have been on projects where like the... Um, I did all the design work up front and established a strong branding system and then kind of almost rolled off the project. And then the developers have used the branding system. And then I step back in and I'm like, what had happened? It's, it gets, (laughs) but it's what you're talking about where somebody waved their hand and said, you design it based on what you have. And I'm like, Oh, Oh goodness. Yeah. It gets like easier if you have at least like, a component library to say like, okay, Mm -hmm. use the Lego bricks to put together a UI. Um, But even then it can still become difficult. User experience comes into play and you're like, you know, might not be thinking of that in the best way. Well, and I'm curious from your perspective, Brad, sorry, we're rabbit hole. (laughs) Do you see more of that though on internal tools? Because at least in my imagination, I can't imagine somebody at Atlassian for a user like in Jira yeah. being like, you design this. Yeah. Yeah. Internal tools are kind of the Wild West. And I'm yeah. working on one right now. And they were kind of like, well, this is the data we want to show. Y- you guys kind of get it on the screen in whatever way works best for you. So it was like a yeah. pick the right component from the design system for the job mm-hmm. and then slap it on the page. Yeah. The last time I had a corporate job, all of our internal tools like for filing PTO or like HR tools, they look like they were designed in like the nineties. Yeah, <laughs> It looks so terrible, but it, I mean, that's, it wasn't public facing, which yeah. um, I will say this. So I have recently been binging on a podcast called acquired. It's fantastic. I actually picked mm-hmm. it on the last episode, but one of the interviews that I listened to is with Dara from Uber. And he said that one of the downfalls of Uber was that they did not spend enough time focusing on the user experience for drivers, um, which I thought was fascinating because it's an internal tool. But he was like, when you think about it, those people are in the app for at least four to five hours a day. And that's how they're making their living. Um, I'll just throw out this quick fact and then we can kind of transition back because I really didn't mean to steal the show. But he said that the Uber platform, which 
if I understood correctly, the Uber platform is not just serving Uber. They're like trying to read, uh, distribute it to other services like oh. taxis and things like that, that you're like, oh, that's a competitor, but they're using that platform oh, sure. in other areas. Um, but one of the things he said was that it is the number one platform for earners in the entire world, um, which I, I think that's right. Uh, which is surprising because I know like Amazon's what the number one employer, but when you're talking about earning your money on a platform, on an app, Uber is number one. That's so. how you get that Apple money. It's like um, <laughs> MKBHD made a really good video about this where he's like, you enable your competitors by becoming the backbone that their hmm. service yeah. is built on. So like air tags. other people can build Apple compatible air tags and sell the hardware but guess what? All of the software and all of that mesh network only benefits Apple at the end of the mm. day. So it's one of these weird things where it's like, we get you <laughs> even by enabling you. <laughs> Apple seems like they would be the perfect candidate for <laughs> we get you by enabling you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if anybody could do that really well, it, it so would 100% sense. be Apple. Um, and Florian, thinking about like technology, this is always one of my favorite questions because we have a lot of people that have built various different things with platforms or whatever uh like what's the tech stack behind um i code this yeah so we use next.js and superbase sweet uh with typescript and tailwind css and like all the jazz and especially it was back then in december when we started i have uh this guy Mihai who's helping me to build a back end because i'm mostly a front-end developer yeah. So he was like, look, we, this is TRPC. Do you want to add it? And I was like, I don't know what it is, but sure, if you, <laughs> if you know it well enough. And I've learned it. That was the first time I've heard about it. And I've learned it and added it. And yeah, it's yeah. nice. Uh, so you are using we, TRPC in Next.js? Uh, yeah. Cool. Are and you on then, the app directory? No. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, with the editor we're using, it didn't work well with Next 13. So we're still in Next 12, which okay. is something we would need to figure out because, yeah, things are, you know, they're advancing and we're, we're behind. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's been very nice so far. And, yeah, I'm grateful for him because, yeah, I, would, I just picked Next because I knew Next and Superbase because I knew it. So... <laughs> How have you find um, like scaling? Like how how is Superbase done as your data sets grown and as your amount of users have grown? Do you also use it for off? Uh, yes. So right now we're I think we're only using it for auth and for like database. Uh, we added Prisma, which mm -hmm. again I don't know exactly the details, but uh, yeah, in order to scale it, uh, we mm -hmm. added. Prisma. And for uh, TypeScript types. Do, does easier. Prisma talk to Superbase? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Superbase. Oh, so you just don't have to use their client, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, you can do it yeah. multiple ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have so, access to the underlying Postgres. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. They give you direct access to exactly. Postgres. So um, there's one specific use case where I'm thinking about doing this for the backend for uh, Learn, Build, Teach. So I use Superbase, but I'm thinking about ripping out the Superbase client for database stuff and just using Prisma. One, so I can get migrations. That's a big step. That's also another mm -hmm. reason we... The other is someone else. Like right now, if someone were to try to clone this and run it, they have to have Superbase set up with all the database models and everything, which it, like there's no way to just replicate an existing instance. So they could, in theory, Prisma. just connect. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, well, is it, is there a streamlined, easy way to do it for someone that's pulling down a new project, but I'll come back to that. Um, but the, the idea for me is like, if I'm using Prisma, they don't even have to have Superbase. Like they could just have a locally running MySQL if they wanted to, and just change out the connection string or whatever, or have a Postgres hosted somewhere that's still not Superbase. But that's, um, one of the things I've been thinking about with the backend for learn, build, teach. What yeah, was, so yeah, go ahead, Amy. Superbase. <clears throat> Superbase is just a Postgres database. There are superpowers that they've stacked on top of it that you would want to maybe use Superbase's stuff for. So Florin mentioned auth. That's a huge one. They also mm -hmm. have the storage, which we haven't talked about. But mm -hmm. you can use Prisma. You can tack that on. 
and not use their API. So I can kind of explain some of these terms for people that are like, what in the world are you guys talking about now? Um, so with Supabase, they have a special API that you can use. They have a special syntax that you can use to make calls to the database that makes it really easy to get your information in and out. Prisma also offers a similar API that you can use to get information in and out, but Prisma also has migration. So what that means is if I change the database and somebody else comes and tries to use the database um, and makes a change, you want to make sure that that gets replicated, especially if you're working from a local environment. So so a migration helps keep track of all those changes that get made to the database. So you could still use the Supabase API without and Prisma without having to update all those API calls if you wanted. Um, Supabase does have a API call called Sync, which means that this is what I was thinking about, um, James, is you can run Supabase locally. So you just say like, and I don't even remember the command, you can use Homebrew homebrew like in uh, brew supabase and it'll put supabase on your machine and then you just say supabase oh. sync and mm. it will download and sync all of your database information with what's online or up Ooh. on the, the cloud so now it's like so. local postgres and you have yep. a replica of prod that's right. for when you're that's developing right. that's right mm. that's cool. um and supabase you can also use this is what i was going to ask you can also use it self-hosted or you can uh, use their services. So Florin, I don't know. I'm curious, are you using this like Supabase's hosting platform or are you guys? Okay. Um, to me, that's the easiest. I think that's like $20 a month, but Supabase mm -hmm. is all open source. So you could put it on your digital install instance or digital ocean, sorry, digital ocean instance, if you wanted um, to host it yourself. Amy, yeah, so we just I don't ate. mean to interrupt, but you've got a visitor. I know. Well, he <laughs> is <laughs> wanted. <laughs> At first, when I first read that comment, it said, Amy is wanted. And I was like, I don't understand what that means. And then I realized the connection of like, this people who listen to the podcast, if this stays in audio wise, like Amy's daughter was just like <laughs> hovering behind her, waiting for her attention for something. <laughs> Very cute. I can't wait for. I mean, She's maybe thinking. I can't wait, but okay. But one day I will have a daughter big enough, I'm old hovering. enough in the background to, yeah. to hover and want my want they're my going, attention. They're going back to school shopping. She's like, we're leaving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, luckily, my wife like plans play dates when we record these podcasts, so oh, it's nice. perfect. Well, that they are they're leaving on the yeah. – <laughs> it's not really a play date, but <laughs> – yeah. That's Flora, was there – have you had any like – technical challenges or hurdles so one and i think this is a good call out like the migrating to next js 13 it's easy for honestly content creators like us yeah. to just say here's a tutorial using next js 13 and, and you start with like create a new project and it's all easy most of the time that's not true right like we have existing software that needs to go through upgrades and updates and there's challenges along the way so that was a cool call out to say like next js 12 is where you are you want to get to 13 but there's challenges that you have to figure out any other like interesting challenges that you've had to, to solve so far? Uh, yeah. Once uh, Kevin Powell made a video about the platform and he brought so many people that <laughs> they couldn't log in because Superbase wow. has a limit. Uh, I think it was 100 people per hour. And oh, they wow. were rushing into yeah. to the platform. And I was like, okay, what do I do? But then they have their warning and says that uh, something about if you're really serious about their project, you should use an SMTP server, something like that. Okay. And well, I looked into uh, Namecheap, the domain register, whatever. I, these nice. things are just out of my league. So I'm just trying to learn as I go. But basically, I added a custom uh, SMTP server. It was all good, but then into like uh, next day, they emailed me and said, uh, you know what? There was too much spam, so we had to shut down your server. And I was like in a cruise in the middle of the ocean. I was like, <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> I mean, people can't log in on the platform. That's crazy. And it was, uh, they basically said that uh, on the website, on the login page, people could spam the email button. Like you, had, we had a magic login. So you mm -hmm. only entered the email and click the button. And they said that 
uh, there was spam, someone who was spamming the servers. But then I checked our website and it wasn't true because uh, Superbase kind of has a wrapper on top of it and only allows a person to submit the form mm. every 60 seconds. Yeah. So I was furiously emailing them back and I was like, no, that's a lie. I mean, we <laughs> do have something in place. They wanted me to use reCAPTCHA. And I was like, no, I won't add something like that on my website ever. And it was, yeah, that was super annoying. But we figured out some somehow and I made them uh, <laughs> turn back the server. <laughs> so yeah, it's all good now. Uh, but yeah, that was a fun one. It was also fun because I was on the cruise and <laughs> good thing I had internet. But mm -hmm. I think my biggest fear in like coding a SaaS application is somehow accidentally screwing something up with with user data. It just becomes so real at that point. Uh, what do you have in place for protecting against that or like testing your code or backing up your DBs, you know, just mm -hmm. protection steps? Yeah, so my backend developer um, made all of us switch to a local environment. So yeah. before pushing to production, we do stuff there. And I was like, no, I want to push to main. Like, no, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Do that. You're the boss, but no, you can't do that. <laughs> uh, and I, like, what? Do I have to install Docker and all this stuff? No, just yeah. Like, production. No, please don't do that. So we have that in place right now. So we're testing. Uh, and there are also like other environments where we can uh, test the code. And uh, that's been working well. We also upgraded on Superbase to their pro tier. So we get uh, a backup for the database. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and like so far, we're really impressed by how it's scaling because we're having, uh, I think last month we had over 160,000 page views. So, yeah, and like no problem at all. It was all working well. And uh, again, two days ago, Kevin made another video. And since then, we had over 1,200 new members. So, wow. again, no problems there. And they submit new projects. And like we have a bunch of interactions with the database, getting the projects, getting the likes, uh, the images, mm -hmm. the profile data, so everything. And we haven't noticed anything like nice. buggy, so it's really 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 good so far nice that's great um does superbase offer any of that like branching stuff where like you can you can create a branch of the database for a particular branch of your repository and then kind of like test stuff and then when when it all works like merge it i don't know about that honestly okay. uh... Maybe Mihai, he joined the chat. Maybe he can tell, yeah. but I don't know. <laughs> uh, how's your experience with Docker been running locally? Like, what's your, you know, well, start command look like? Yeah, I honestly also tricked that, so I'm not running Docker, but I created yeah. a, another Superbase project, which uh -huh. I kind of made it be out my local yes, environment duh, duh. because there was like so many commands. Also, whenever I change something in the backend, when we have to create a new migration. Uh, and I had to run. I have to run this command, which is asking me, "Are you sure you want to delete?" And I'm like, all the time, "No, I'm not sure." Even though I know it's the local database. Yeah. But I'm always scared to run that command, so I avoid it at all costs. Because yeah, who knows if I ever run it on the production database, that would be not so good. <laughs> yep, yep. That's that's the scary part about running a SaaS. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. Although I think with the, the backups, we should have most of our data back. But still, I wouldn't want to go through that, especially yeah, as we're growing and more and more people use the, the platform every day. Like, I think we have over 10 people every time on, on the website. So do you... Uh... Or would you be willing to go into like what it costs to run the service versus you know how many paid users you have and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I post all the financials online. Uh, so right now we pay for per sell. We pay uh, because we make money with the project, so we are mm. uh, we have to upgrade. 
Uh, that's like $40 right now. It's me and uh, the backend developer. In September, I'm going, as I said, I'm going to hire agent and then uh, he'll also get his own account. Then we pay $25 for Superbase and I pay $150 for an email service. So that we send emails every week or promotion and stuff like that. So basically around $200 right now for the services. Although we could also move the email link system on our own, but I don't know. It was a bit too much to work on to build it custom. So right now we're just using a service and uh, yeah. What so service that, uh, are you using? Uh, loops. Okay. Uh, James tweeted within the last 24 hours because I don't know. <laughs> What my algorithm, when my algorithm sends me stuff, but um, you were asking about uh, if I said the right, yeah, hmm? <laughs> I second guess. Uh, a bunch of people replied saying recent was a great one. Um, I've used Postmark before in the past, which is really great too. And I guess there's there's a difference between like programmatic transactional email and then like newsletter yeah. stuff. And Florin, are you like? What you're talking about for your service is more of the newsletter type, mm -hmm. like a subscriber base that you send emails out. Is that right? Yeah, that as okay. well. And also like whenever someone signs up, we have an email, a welcome email. And then we have yep. two days, like we send another email to mm -hmm. like try to convince them to become pro members. Okay. And we also have an email if they uh, click the buy button, the buy pro membership, and then they cancel the purchase mm -hmm. we also send an email of whatever whatever what happened can we help you maybe it was some issue with the car or something so we use that as well and i also store so whenever someone becomes a pro member i add a flag to their uh, field in loops so i know in the future uh, marketing emails to not target them again because they're already a pro member so i'm kind of still learning how to uh, sell without being too salesy, yep. uh, but yeah. What are you using for your uh, to take payments? Are you using Stripe? Yes, we're using Stripe. I feel like all of this is the the cool thing about being a developer. I talk about this all the time. It's just the ability to see a problem and build stuff. But I also think mm -hmm. it's like very nice to hear you acknowledge that like you don't do and can't do everything and don't have knowledge mm -hmm. of everything. Cause I think a lot of people look at like, Oh, I, I have this idea, but I don't think I could build the whole thing. And so you've like, you've got people around you that can help mm -hmm. fill in gaps of, of knowledge and, and add expertise, but then also just leveraging services to handle mm -hmm. email and Stripe and Superbase takes care of so much for you. Like you, you're able to build something really powerful. Yeah. What was like, how, how did you find people to work on it for you? Was it just like an open source project that people could contribute to? Was mm -hmm. it a project that you're like specifically bringing people in because they reach out to you and want to contribute or like how did that process work? Mm -hmm. So uh, when I first had the idea of the challenges and I started like testing that, like creating an MVP, which basically meant me posting on Twitter to see if people would be interested in doing something like this, I was posting the images and they replied with a code pen link of the project they built. So then I saw that, okay, this has potential and uh, I wanted to build a, a website. It, I don't think we could call it a platform, a website which you can log in and submit the code down link. And uh, uh, I had, a, I had a, a member of my community, like the older community for my YouTube channel uh, who been, I've been talking to, and he's very good at backend development. So I was like, could you help me build this platform? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, sure. And I wanted, okay, but I don't want you to do it for free. I'm going to pay you. Are you okay with that? He was like, uh, yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up hiring him a couple hours a day to help me do the backend and all the crazy stuff. As I said, I'm a front-end developer, so... Even though like I could potentially build a platform at the stage it is right now, but it would have taken me much more yeah. time, right? So I'm very grateful for Mihai to uh, join me uh, in this journey and helping me build a platform. It's, yeah, it has been 
really great to have him. And then, like, uh, Mihai also built a couple of friendships in my community with other people. So I also brought them in and they were there, like, helping us and giving us ideas and feedback and stuff like that. So we're kind of a group of friends right now who uh, build the project. And I'm slowly starting to hire them because, yeah, <laughs> uh, we started to be profitable a couple of months ago. So I need to balance the finances. But uh, yeah, my goal is to uh, work on a project which I really enjoy and have enough money to like bring other people to work on the project, give them freedom to uh, do what they want. And as well as like help a community of developers to get their next, uh, get to the next step stage in the career. So cool. Yeah. Are you working on it full time? Uh, I guess <laughs> full time is not the right word because I'm thinking about it 24 seven, but yeah, I guess <laughs> you could say full time. Uh, it's on my mind all the time. This is <laughs> what I'm doing every day. <laughs> and uh, But I really enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy all the challenges that come with it. And I'm learning stuff along the way. And as I said, seeing the impact it has, because I was, I did other projects in the past, you know, and nothing came to uh, this level. So, yeah, I'm grateful for it. Well, I think we can move into the last section of the podcast, which is our picks and plugs section. So we pick something that we enjoy and also something that we want to plug, uh, either from ourselves or from the community or whatever. Anyone want to go first? Awkward silence. I've got I've got the same pick as I did last time, uh, and th this was like a couple of weeks ago. It's Zelda. I'm still playing it. <laughs> it's a huge game. Um, it's awesome. Still on it. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I've let's see. I've got like 70 hours into it so far. Still haven't even finished the story. Not even halfway done with the actual game content. Like there's hundreds of hours of gameplay in this thing. Just wild. You have a plug. Me, it's, go I sorry. It's go ahead. Ridiculous. Amy. It's ridiculous to me what people have been able to build on that. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't quite understand how all the latest versions of Zelda works. I'm still stuck in like <laughs> 19, the 1990s, where you know, like you walk into a new screen and the whole screen shifts over, you know, like the old T 2D world, but. Um, I don't know. My son was talking about it and telling me that people built like hoverboards and crazy things. Yeah. I just saw a video of the other day where somebody built like an attack drone, like an airship that then like <laughs> drops a drone from it and they all have like lasers on them and they shoot. It's wild. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. But honestly, like I'm, this is my first Zelda game like ever. So I'm just really into like, walking around the world, riding the horse everywhere. I don't get super into the building stuff. Um, so it's uh, it's really cool. It took me a while to figure out like how to play it and how to enjoy it because I'm usually I'm a guy who's like, let me run to the dot on the map and kill whatever's there and be done with it. But this mm -hmm. game is a lot more like slower paced. You have to talk to people, look at the world, pay attention, use your brain, you know? Still have never played Zelda ever. It's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, one day. Mostly because like all these AAA games nowadays, you'll pay like seventy bucks and get like a six-hour campaign, and it's done. Mm -hmm. So this game is like so different. Uh, yeah, and let's see for for my plug, I'll just point it at James. Look at the shirt, and you can get uh -huh. it at <laughs> brad com slash store. And for people listening, <laughs> yeah, plug Jet. Please continue to plug me. <laughs> I, that sounds weird. Um. The for context, people listening to audio, the the shirt is again a quote from a stream that Jason Langsdorf did, and Brad took it and made shirts. But it's um, basically about like brackets versus parentheses versus what else is on there? Okay. Curly brackets, curly brackets, and angle brackets, and calling them square boys, round boys, curly boys, and pointy boys. 
um, which just, I think people loved. And then Brad took it and made a shirt out of it. So bradgearp.com slash store to find that. I'm going to go because I'm going to piggyback off of Brad. So I'm going to plug the Legend of Zelda's Link's Awakening. This was also a Switch game, but it's a remake of the like the game they built in the 90s. So this is like my kind of play. It's also a longer game, but I don't know if that's just because like I played it as a kid, (laughs) Um, but I have replayed it as an adult. My son and I played it. So I prefer kind of like the 2D gameplay versus the 3D worlds. I get lost in a 3D world. So um, anyways, but it is very enjoyable. And then I will plug the Learn, Build, Teach Discord server. So this is a server that James runs and it's a great place to connect with other developers and designers just to have conversations or if you need help with something there are plenty of people there to help unstick you so if you go to learnbuildteach.com it will redirect you to the discord server lauren do you want me to go do you want me to go you can go okay um So I talk a lot about languages. Uh, We talked about Brad and I using Duolingo earlier, and I'm kind of plugging an idea more so than a specific thing. Um, But I've been rereading the Harry Potter series in Spanish, and I'm trying to continue to read in Spanish because I don't actually speak as much as I would like to. Um, And I I could speak a decent amount. I could read really well in Spanish. Uh, So anyway, I'm on book two now. So I started a few weeks ago and read book one fairly quickly, and now I'm on book two. Then it's just a great way to like kind of like passively be practicing. So especially if you find a story that you know really well, like I've read the series five times all the way through. So if I if I don't know a word in Spanish, I can usually get like additional context clues just from knowing the the story. So if you're learning a language and looking for an additional way to practice more and maybe passively, like find find a book that you know relatively well. Um, and you can kind of determine what level of book works for you and then just try to read that. Um, instead of reading a book in English. And then I am going to plug uh, that conference and specifically the coffee. But that conference is a series of two conferences per year. One is in Wisconsin uh, in the summer. One is uh, in the winter in Austin, Texas. And we talked about Clark, I think, before we started recording. But Clark is an, is an amazing community member, like just super involved in the community, super passionate about uh, providing help and resources for the community. And uh, Brad and Amy and I were in Austin this past year in January. I think we all are planning on being there for this next one. So super excited to be back at another that conference um, after just going to one this past week to then go to Austin in six months. So you can find more information about uh, that at that.us. And then I'll post a link to uh, the that coffee if people are interested. It's not an affiliate link. It's just a link that gets you a dollar off of uh, coffee if you're interested. So uh, that conference is where it's at. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, my pick would be the Andrew Huberman podcast. I've been really into uh, health and fitness and understanding more about uh, what happens in our body, what we have to do to live healthier. And I really like the way he breaks down like every topic and gives like uh, study cases for everything, like why ha- why something happens in our lives and uh, how to create a better morning routine, and how to exercise better, what to eat and stuff like that. I've been uh, really enjoying his podcast during my morning walks. And as a plug, I'm going to plug I code this if people want to get better at their craft uh, become better developers by having daily challenges. They can join. And also we have a Discord community where they can uh, talk with other people who are in the, in our, on our platform. And uh, yes, I'm looking forward to meeting new people there. I think that is going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, uh, make sure to leave a rating and review. We would appreciate that so that other podcast listeners can find us so we can continue to have on more amazing guests like Florin. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Florin, for being here in the meantime. That's all we got. Thank you for having me. See you.
So that's our, yeah, go ahead. Brad, I um, did, made this face during the picks and plugs because Adam did pick last week. Adam did pick the one wheel. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So to, just to provide a little bit of context, we had Adam Argyle on the podcast. So if you go to James's YouTube channel, you can listen to that episode now. Otherwise, you can wait a couple weeks and it'll be available on the audio version. Brad was originally going to help co-host, and he really wanted to talk to Adam about the one wheel. But he yeah. celebrated a birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A happy birthday song. Um, actually, then we would have had to pay royalties. But um, <laughs> That's like really expensive, I've heard. So dumb. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, he wasn't able to make it, but um, Adam did plug the one wheel. So. so was it just you this past time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was oh, a great sorry. episode. It was very, oh no, it was, it <laughs> no, was that's a great why. episode. I love the transition of, yeah, it was just me and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Uh, I was a little all over the place because I had so many questions I wanted yeah. to ask Adam. Um, and I just told him, I was like, I'm sorry. The only theme here is like, is you not continuing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's me. <laughs> I'm going to popcorn here. Um, so for anybody that is not familiar with Adam and his stuff, he is DevRel at Google and he has a uh, former coworker with Jay. If you guys are familiar with Jay, we mm -hmm. have talked about Jay a few times, but just creates these awesome demos for like what the browser is doing and all these new features that are coming out in CSS. And it's, it's amazing. Like it's an exciting time to be a part of the web and to be building front end things. So we spent some time talking about view transitions, which I've not done anything with. Nice. And that is mm -hmm. beautiful. Like it's amazing. And I, we talked about the has property, which I'm embarrassed to admit, but I've never used the has property just because right. I know enough CSS wizardry that I can do a lot <laughs> of the things that I want to do with like my current knowledge. But the has property, what's really interesting to me, um, I'll just give a little brief you know, monologue about this stuff. Um, is that you can kind of control the layout based on whatever, like say the parent thing is. So it can look and say, oh, I have two items in a container. Let me show this. Oh, I have three items in a container. I'm going to change the layout. So if you're talking about like product design, which is a lot of what I do now, if you return the results for something, you can change the layout based on what that result is, which is really interesting. So he had some great stuff to talk about you should check out the episode he's super fun in general um i wish i could have uh james and i talk about this quite often but wish i could have included some of the pre-show banter because he's just hilarious in general so we had a lot of fun conversations Man, i can't wait till the weather cools off in texas because i pretty much go for a one-wheel ride every morning mm. before work starts yeah. he was like it's like floating is what he it's was snowboarding <laughs> yeah it's snowboarding <laughs> yeah. i love it I don't trust myself. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can't really wipe out on one of those and come away like unscathed. Like if you fall, well, you're, it's going to get like, hurt. Look at Kent's, uh, Kent C. Dodd's like Twitter <laughs> pictures. He's gotten in a few crazy accidents. Yeah. I'll. Uh... Can you afford the full bicycle? <laughs> so the, um, the one wheel is like a motorized skateboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll put a link to like the one I have. I got like the yeah. smaller one. Yeah, I, I do want to can't get it. on a skateboard. Period. <laughs> yeah, that sounds older. Terrifying. I get more and more difficult. Terrifying. I do. I will try it in Austin uh, in January. Yeah. I didn't try it this past time, but I'll I'll give it a try. Just did it. And Just she was did pregnant. it. She was, she was pregnant. pregnant at the time. Yeah, she was, she was pretty good. Yeah, she doesn't she doesn't fear very much. I'll tell you one one thing, and then I need to run because I've got something at eleven that I need to get ready for. But um so that we'll conferences see. are are at um kalahari resorts which have these uh really really nice water parks um like it was in, in wisconsin at least there's like a full outdoor water park and a full indoor water park like it's a good experience i think the awesome one is the same but they have I, I i love roller coasters and water slides to a certain extent and i have this limit of like things that go straight down so roller coaster that literally just like takes you up and then drops you i like have done but it's, it's terrifying i've never actually done that one because i've never so been good. there um but so in meet up uh, yeah in uh in wisconsin they and i'm assuming in austin's probably have the same thing they have the thing where you just like stand in a tube like you you walk up all these stairs and stand in a tube and you can't really see much and then the floor just drops out 
uh-uh. beneath you. And yeah, so that's like, we were walking around. My brother-in-law was like, I might do it. And I was like, you're crazy. Then I just, in my head, I knew I wasn't going to do it, but I kept thinking about it. And it was one of those things where I talk a lot about this in, in my career. Like I know, I know if I think the experience is worth it, no matter how scared I am, I need to push myself to do it. And so I forced myself to, to go up all these stairs and I walked up there and he like opened the thing. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not ready yet. Like I'm, I got to think about it for a little bit. And so two other people went and then my brother-in-law did them uh, like side by side. And it was a ton of fun and I was proud of myself for doing it, but it's like super terrifying. There's, you said this, there's a quote that I heard that it's kind of stayed in my head, but it's like the fear lasts for a second, but the memory lasts for a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. I Absolutely. take like the, the more intense approach, then do it scared. Like <laughs> yeah, your fear is not going to go away. Just right. you telling yourself then, then do it scared and then you won't be afraid of it. Yeah. yeah. I also did one of those in uh, Germany once. And it was like super, like that was the first one. And it was super fast. Like you, you got down in like five seconds. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. I'll do it again. And then we went to Dubai this year and they had mm. another similar one. And I was expecting the same, like, like we were expecting it to go down the same way. But it took like 20 seconds. And I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> wow it must have been huge I mu- yeah because yeah, you so, go so fast yeah and du- like dubai there they had probably the biggest uh, aqua park in or the second biggest in the world something like that yeah yeah really they really don't do like, anything small yeah yeah it was amazing there we we stayed for i don't know six hours and we couldn't go on all the slides wow like, there's so many and obviously like the lines were yeah. crazy but yeah, fun, fun journey. Sweet. All right. Well, I'm gonna run, get ready for. Well, I'm gonna go eat something before, and then get ready for a session in Learnville Teach live coding awesome. session. What are you Thanks, doing, everybody? Data structures um, and algorithms today. Yeah, and I, I think I'm gonna build a linked list class from scratch and kind of discuss because we talked about. Um, talked about them last time, but didn't have like code to share and talk about. Yeah, so I thought that would be fun. Sweet. Still just um, kind of making it up as I go. I am hosting a town hall at in forty five minutes. Oh, sweet. For Redwood JS. So nice. if you want to hear about uh, Redwood, not Redwood React Server Components and how we're interacting it, like mm. incorporating it in Redwood, you should Ooh. come because we'll give an update. So I like it. Um, Amy, if you feel free to share a link in Discord if if you want mm-hmm. to as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna run. Thank you all. Catch y'all Thanks next time. Thanks for having me.